In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about why you should use SharePoint Online for your intranet. You can boost productivity and collaboration using a SharePoint Online intranet. So a quick overview. Introduction to SharePoint. SharePoint is a web-based collaboration and document management platform developed by Microsoft that enables organizations to create, manage, and share information and documents more effectively and efficiently. Benefits of using SharePoint for an intranet? SharePoint offers several benefits for organizations using it as an intranet platform, including centralized information, improved collaboration, and streamlined document management. We're going to be touching on multiple features of SharePoint intranets as we move through this presentation. So if you've not used SharePoint before, as I say, SharePoint is a web-based collaboration platform. SharePoint is a web-based collaborative platform that allows teams to create sites, document libraries, and project management tools, such as task lists um, and automated workflows. Not only can you do this, but you can also store documents as well in what we refer to as document libraries. SharePoint allows users to create and manage document libraries, providing version control and easy access to important documents. Now, an intranet is made up of multiple things, including documents. So making it nice and easy to access things like policies, forms, procedures, things like that, that people want to easily get access to, your SharePoint intranet can leverage that to make sure that people can find them easily. But also we're providing a level of um, information to people in terms of news and events. And SharePoint provides the ability to post key articles relating to upcoming news and events directly to a centralized homepage for all users to easily see. So here's a bit of an example of a SharePoint intranet. And you can see we've got navigation across the top. Um, now, this is actually what I refer to as a hub navigation bar, which means it's actually um, consistent throughout the intranet. The internet typically is made up of a home page, but also will have multiple other sites like department sites or policies or areas about volunteering, for example, or any other types of subcategory information quite often have their own sites. But this navigation bar across the top would be consistent throughout all those other sites. We then have what we call our site navigation bar. Now, the site navigation bar is specific to the current site that we're looking at. And you can see here there's more information on the site about career paths benefits of working for the company, the overall culture, as well as things like some of our issue trackers and asset management tools that people might want to access easily. We can also see as we scroll down, we've got our news kind of areas. So this could be like a slideshow um, to give the latest announcements and news. We've also got navigational elements, things like quick links. So maybe things like an FAQ, how do I find performance review information? How do I take a leave of absence? How do I prepare for my a new job. These are all things that people might want to easily access. We could also have things like these call to actions where we can have buttons that take us to things like vision and values, career, benefits of working for the company, or even embed applications like Power Apps for expense request forms. We can see a subcategory of, air, of news here, which we're rolling up from other areas of our intranet. So as I say, you will quite often have department sites built into your intranets and they can also have their own news articles that can then roll up onto your SharePoint site. Um, we can also pull out things like documents. So it's not just news, but also documents have been created on other sites and then roll them up onto the homepage of our internet as well. Again, more buttons, navigation options, maybe taking to a sort of calendar, SharePoint calendar of work anniversaries, promotions. Um, we can also use call to action web parts for things like um, how can we help, um, maybe it's a whistleblowing form, maybe it's a feedback form. There's things like that we can link off to from our internet homepage as well. well. One of the things I really must stress about the importance of designing your SharePoint intranet is to think about the usability, but also the, the look and feel and the overall brand of the homepage as well. Now, SharePoint allows you to design the homepage using building blocks known as web parts um, and you can configure them to use certain images. You can change the theme or the color of the intranet to make it feel like it's your company's brand. And you want people to feel like it is part of their kind of overall kind of systems that they're using on a day-to-day -day basis. 
So design is important to ensuring SharePoint internets are user friendly and accessible, but also good design can help to improve employee engagement and productivity, um, as well as the adoption of this new intranet. Design can be used to make it easier to find and access information on an intranet. So when we were looking at things like having multiple quick links area for things like linking out to different topics, information based about um, specific job roles, or even just FAQs of how do I, it's all making it much easier and accessible to find this information quickly rather than having to dig through mountains of information. So what are the, some of the benefits of a SharePoint intranet? So it's a centralized hub for information. SharePoint provides a centralized hub for info information which makes it easier for employees of an organization to find and access the information they need to do their jobs efficiently. It's also about collaboration. So SharePoint provides a platform for collaboration between employees of an organization, allowing them to work together on documents, projects, and other tasks in real time. So not only would you have a SharePoint homepage as part of your intranet, you'll also have department areas. Quite often you'll have um, multiple department areas and you might have a department area which is accessible to everybody but it's owned by a department say for example like an IT team might have a uh, IT communication site in which they're posting out information about um, things that, that might be of interest to the wider organization like um, we're buying some new hardware some new laptops mobile phones for people or maybe there's a new data protection policy which is coming out or there's things like that or, or, or maybe there's an outage that you want people to be aware of there's all sorts of things you could use that communication site for but the IT department might also have a team site in which they can share documents and work on things together maybe even have a uh, tracking support ticket tracking tool or something like that built into that SharePoint site so again SharePoint as an intranet is all about uh, giving out information but also collaborating on that information we can also build in document management so SharePoint offers document management capabilities that allow employees to store manage and share documents securely this makes it easier for employees to access information they need when they need it so as I say there's two different types of documents uh, management you've got the kind of documents which is widely accessible to everybody so maybe these are policies procedures forms useful information and materials maybe marketing materials things like that and then you've got document management of the actual kind of documents in the background that maybe is happening on team sites people working together and it's not necessarily public information that you're giving to the wider organization some other key features of an internet so let's say we want that single source of truth um, for documents such as forms, policies, procedures, we're also looking at having news as well as event. So we can see we can roll up events onto our internet homepage, and it's super simple to add a new news event. It's a basically like uh, an Outlook calendar. So maybe this is SharePoint training that we're conducting on Friday the first at 4 p.m. Um, where is it? We can say it is in Liverpool. Um, we can even put in a, like an address or even like a, a URL if it's going to take place on a Teams meeting, for example. We can provide some more details and even tag in specific people into that as well. So we can say uh, I, I'm going to be there as a participant. Then when we're happy with that, I click on save and that will create us our event. If I go back to my home page fairly shortly afterwards, that event will then start to appear on the home page roll up as well. I just wanted to pause a second to ask a quick favor. If you're enjoying this video, please like the video and subscribe to my channel to get notified about new SharePoint training videos. If you are also looking for more advanced training on SharePoint, then check out my membership, which is only 99 pence per month, but it gives you exclusive access to a six part series, which is all about SharePoint training fundamentals. There's also a set of videos which shows you how to build your own intranet from scratch. As well as that, um, there's also a members Q&A area, so you'll get priority responses to any questions that you have directly to me. Um, again, we also offer professional services. So if you're looking at building out an intranet and you're not too sure, maybe you're concerned about security of who's got access, maybe you're not too sure if you're building it correctly or 
the storage allocations are going to be a problem or any of these types of things, then get in contact with me. You can use the link in my bio. There's also a link in the description uh, of this video. Use the contact form, get in touch, and we can discuss how we can make sure that your new SharePoint internet launch is a success. So we've talked about um, documents, news and events, as well as the quick links, but also more features of the SharePoint internet include things like the search bar. Now, I love this because most intranets don't necessarily have a very good search that's built into them. Now, the search not only is looking for documents, but it's also looking for things like news and files, and different SharePoint sites. So if I was looking for a particular file, maybe it's how we work, um, which I know is a PowerPoint presentation, it's going to pull out information from all the different sites which are associated to this intranet. So it's not just the home page it's pulling from. It will find not only the files with the title, how we work, but also where it's found in the text of pages and SharePoint sites and other documents. We can then filter them down. So say, for example, um, I want to look, I know it's a PowerPoint. I can filter that down. I can filter it down by um, when it was modified. I could filter it down by whether it's a file, a SharePoint site, a news item, or an image. There's plenty of ways I can filter down my search results to find the content that I'm looking for. But there's loads of fantastic features. You could also include things like people cards or what's known as the people web part. So this is often introduced onto the SharePoint internet homepage for things like letting people know who the first aider is or who the fire officer is, um, those types of things. So if people need to know quickly who to contact, that information is readily available on the internet. You can also generate newsletters. So a lot of people are used to getting their content from the comms team, the marketing team from uh, emails. So people are being sent emails. So why not try and drive some traffic to your new internet by generating newsletters, which are based on the news items that have been created on SharePoint anyway, but then they served up um, a snippet via an email. So that encourages people to come onto your internet. And if you're interested in newsletters, I recently posted another video on my channel, which shows you exactly how to go and create a newsletter and share that with people. So we're almost at the end, but let's talk a little bit about the limitations of other internet solutions and why SharePoint um, is so much better than um, other options. So the first is about scalability. Other internet solutions may lack the scalability of SharePoint, making it difficult to grow or expand the system as the organization grows. But as SharePoint is all based around your Microsoft 365 tenants, as more employees are added, it's not going to have any impact on the internet. Um, and in fact, actually, it's a really good point about licensing. So if you're already paying for Microsoft 365 licenses in your organization, then you're already paying for SharePoint. So why pay for a third party internet solution? The next is customization. Now, when I say customization, SharePoint offers more customization options than other internet solutions, allowing organizations to tailor their system to their specific needs and requirements. And what I mean by that is not necessarily advanced coding customizations and things like that, which potentially could break if there was an, an update. It's more like subtle configurations. So we have those building blocks, those web parts, which allow us to reliably build out an intranet, but then we can configure them to make them look and feel how we want them to look based on some predefined templates, some colors, images, logos, things like that we can provide, uh, we can configure as part of the intranet. And the final thing is integration. So SharePoint offers better integration capabilities than other internet solutions, allowing it to seamlessly integrate with other Microsoft products and third party applications. So you can embed third party applications, but there's also so many Microsoft products which natively integrate to SharePoint. So things like um, Planner, um, some of the um, Power Platform tools like Power Apps and Power BI, all of these um, have native integrations. Um, you also have things like the Viva, what used to be called Yammer and things like that integrated into SharePoint. There's also um, third party applications like Twitter and YouTube that natively integrate directly into SharePoint. So you don't have to be a Cody code programmer to get those to be integrated to your new SharePoint intranet. I hope you found that useful. And if you did, please like and subscribe to my channel. If you need any support or professional services, getting your SharePoint internet off the ground, you can get in contact with me today. There's a link in the description below and on the bio of my YouTube channel. Get in touch um, with us, use that link, 
use the contact form and we can speak to you about how we can ensure that you get a successful SharePoint intranet launched and adopted properly by your organization. Thank you very much and watch out for more SharePoint useful training videos from my channel.